Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am sitting at my sewing station. I still have to show you guys my room. Must make note, or at least find the hundred other notes that I have that says I need to do that. <laughs> I am going to sew for you today. I am going to teach you how to make the tote bags that I make and that I put on eBay. But we're going to really bring this down to the basics because these kind of videos, tutorials of crafts and things, are a little complicated. And I'm going to try to involve two different cameras, so there's a lot of editing there. And so I want to keep the actual pattern as basic as possible. Let me get one of my totes. The totes I generally make, just because I love to make them this way so much, involve crazy quilt panels. I do the crazy quilting and I use that to make the tote. We will not be doing that today, but I will show you how to make these panels in another video. I also have it lined with a different fabric. The one I show you today, the fabric is going to be matching. So it's just going to be all one fabric. That's only one fabric for you to either have to buy or to come up with and it's going to do the whole thing. We are going to do a pocket on the inside. I will show you on one panel. If you want to do it on both sides, you'll be able to. I have decided I have a couple of options, but I really love this paisley kind of western look, it looks to me. And this is almost like a denim, but it's very soft. This has actually been washed. I've had it for a long time. For this particular tote, if you are interested in making one for yourself, since we will not be doing piecework onto an additional piece of fabric, like in here, see these totes, this outside is actually two layers of fabric and then there's a layer for the inside. So it's really three layers thick. So since we're only going to be doing two layers thick, it's best if you have a somewhat thick, you know, or nice sturdy fabric. But don't worry about it. If you just have 100% cotton, like say for instance, you know, just quilt cotton, very thin, fine cotton, you can do it that way just to get you to practice. But we're going to be using this inside and out and the strap. So let's just get started. So excited. I'm going to try this side angle. I don't know if this is going to work for us, but it's the best angle for me because it gives me the freedom to cut. I'm trying to use a different tripod that can stay right here on my sewing table, so let's just see how this goes. The first thing I did was I just pressed this part of my fabric. That's the only part I'll be using right now. And I'm just going to do a rough cut of maybe 12 inches. This is going to be a small tote because I need four panels and I don't want to waste a lot of fabric, so I'm just going to cut my panels not too wide. Let me just cut right here. So now I want four panels out of this. I'm just going to line those up as best as I can. I'm going to go ahead and just cut two at a time. You can cut any way you want. I just use this mat and I use the edge of the mat as my guide for my scissors to give me a straight edge. So there's one straight edge. Now I'm going to turn around and do another straight edge on the other side. You can measure any way you want. You could even cut out a square of cardboard the size you want and you could have just drawn it on the inside of the fabric because it won't show after. Now I want to cut this in half. So I'm going to put my two straight edges together. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to stick my scissors in here and cut across. Now I need to straighten out those bottom edges. I'm going to just do that like that. This is thick fabric, so it's a little bit hard to cut through all four layers, but I'm strong. So the moral of the story is, you just want four equal pieces. Doesn't matter how you go about cutting them. So I have one, two, three, four. So now I want to take two pieces and I need to decide, do I want the tote to be long and narrow or wide? I'm going to go with the wider tote. So I'm going to put two pieces together with the right sides touching. That means you've got the 
wrong sides on the outside and I want my tote to be wide so this is going to be the top of my tote and I'm just going to sew along three sides. I'm going to sew here, here, and here. I'm going to leave the top open. I'm trying a new angle here too so let's see how this works. I am just going to start at the top and I generally just follow along the edge. I put my foot to the edge so I'm going to take a couple stitches going to go back to lock it in. You will notice that I don't pin anything together. Get to my corner. Just turn around. A couple back stitches. I guess I should mention that this is not going to be like how to sew. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to teach you how to sew. I don't know if I'd know what to say, but if you know how to sew, then you can make this tote bag. And then because I like to make things as strong as possible, I am going to go back around the whole piece with a zigzag stitch, just to secure those edges. Back up a little bit and go. It just finishes off the edges, so you can wash this to your heart's desire and it'll last. Now you'll see that I did not finish this off perfectly in here. This, my other camera is turning off. Just ignore. Doesn't matter. This is going to be on the inside of the bag. And I promise no one will come and measure your tote to see if it's perfectly square. Okay. At this point, most people would say you should trim and you should square off your corners. Nine times out of ten, if you, if you cut the corner to make it easier to turn, you're going to end up with corners that rip. I leave mine. We're just going to turn this one right sides out. Doesn't matter if your corners are not perfectly pointy. Pointy enough for me. And it'll last longer. That's going to be a cute little size tote, you know? You're going to be able to throw your wallet in there, a couple of things, and go on your merry way. Okay, put this piece aside for now. Take your other two pieces. Put them right sides together. We know we want it this way, wide. So this is our top. Now for this, we're only sewing down the two sides. We're leaving the top and the bottom open. So if you want to double check and make sure, you can put your other piece on top and say, okay, yes, this is the right way, top, bottom, and sides. So up and down on each side. I'm very anxious to do the editing to see if I like this setup. I would not be able to have my camera right here where it is if I'm sewing something big, but for something like a tote, I can totally do it. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going up and down each side. Whoops, I'm not gonna start with zigzag. I'm gonna start with my straight stitch. Couple stitches back. If you forget and you accidentally sew the bottom, you just take your little seam ripper and you rip it out. I'm going to tell you, I have done it many times. I'm going to do the zigzag again on each side. And you just do the zigzag like it's hard to see, but you know, my stitching is here, and then I do the zigzag just on the side of it. And it's okay if your zigzag goes over the edges, it's just to help that edge to not fray. Even though the edges are all enclosed, if you wash it in the machine often, you know, it would, it would still fray. So I want you to be able to throw this in the washer anytime you want. So happy you're here with me. You know what I just realized? I forgot to add the pocket. So this one will be without a pocket. So sorry, I wanted to show you that, but maybe it's better we just do this first anyway. 
when you sew a pocket, you want to do it when these two pieces are separate. Next time. So you can see, I have an opening in the top and the bottom. I just sewed the two sides. We are going to leave this one like this and put that aside. And now we're going to work on the strap. I generally cut a strap about five inches wide because it will get folded. Now I'm just measuring my straight edge there. I'm going to make a little gash here in the five. I'm going to put that to the edge. Pretty straight to me. And you want your strap to be like maybe at least a 20 inch drop, so meaning 40 inches long. So let's see here. I could actually go a little bit longer. I'm going to cut this piece. This is folded in half, so I'm cutting in the 22 inch line. So that means it's a 44 inch long piece. Now what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get in closer here. So I have five inches wide by 44 inches long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the iron and I am going to just fold this down and press all the way down this edge. Then I'm going to turn the whole strip on my ironing board and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to just hold it down and press about a half inch, no measuring. And then I will show you what that looks like as soon as I'm done. So this is what it looks like now. You can see I just fold it over about a half an inch on each side and pressed it. Now I'm going to fold the entire strap in half. And you can see that the two finished edges are going to be together and I'm going to press it down. This is the easiest way to make a strap for a purse. Some people make you put the fabric inside out and pull it through. No, that is too much work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch on the open end and just to make it match and make it pretty I will top stitch on the other edge too so it'll look like both sides have seams. Sometimes the edges don't match up right like you can see this is tall here. That doesn't matter because about this much of this is going to be stuck inside the purse. So do not worry your pretty little head over that. I'm going to start by top stitching the open end. And you can do one straight stitch down or two. That's up to you. If you want it to look like jeans or something, you know, with double stitching, you can. I actually have, you know, the ability to use a double needle. I find I don't enjoy that. So I just use one and if I want double stitching, I just sew twice. Ooh. I'm running out of thread. So, I might as well check my bobbin while I'm here. The bobbin is good. So, I'm going to just use this other bobbin that I have ready. Because I know that matches. You can use a bobbin as your top thread. I know people ask me, can you show me how to... I didn't even have my light on. Can you show me how to thread a machine? Well, so many machines are different, so showing you how to do this one isn't even close to what they have now look look at how much trouble I'm having there we go there we go I am going to continue never aim for perfection do not worry about things this tote is going to get very well used. Anything that might not be perfect will not show, I promise you. I hope you make one. All right, so just to make it look like it's matching, I'm going to do top stitching all the way down the other side too. Okay, we're done this step. Okay, now here's a part that might seem tricky. We are going to start to attach the strap to the tote. So you want to take the outer side of your tote, the one that has all three sides finished, and it is just open at the top. You're going to take your strap, and you can fold it in half just to make sure that you don't have it twisted. You're going to make it like a horseshoe under the tote 
Do you see how I just did that? You want to make sure it's not twisted and you're just going to go like this. All you're going to do at this point is you want to take this seam and you want to go about two or three inches down. It doesn't matter. And we're going to attach this here with a pin. I don't usually pin, but I'm going to for your sake because I want to be able to show you what we're doing here. And let me do the other side, then I'll show you up close. So I want to just get the seam like in the middle of the strap, and I'm going to leave about two or three inches sticking up. Okay, I can show you this better at the other camera. So here is what I'm talking about. I have the seam about halfway in the middle of this strap, and I have about this much sticking out. I'm going to just stitch across to hold this strap in place right here. I'm going to take my pin out at this point. You don't have to sew back and forth. You just, this is just to hold it in place. Good enough. You wouldn't even have to stitch it. You could just leave it pinned, but I find it's easier to just go ahead and stitch it. You just have a strap with one line across. On the inside, you have your raw seam placed in the middle of that strap and this much sticking out. And don't worry, you want at least like two inches because that's what's going to make your tote secure. When this is inside the bag, we're going to reinforce that. So now I'm going to the other side. Same thing. I'm just going to stitch across. It doesn't matter if one side has a little bit more of a strap sticking out. Just doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> we are almost done, folks. Now, take your tote outer part. Leave the strap down here somewhere. Take your inner part. You're going to leave it with the wrong sides out. Just going to open it like this. You're going to take this part and just put it inside the other part. Then what you're going to do, and again, you might want to pin for this. You could actually just use an actual safety pin if you don't want to hurt yourself. You're going to put the strap that you just sewed. Let me see if I can zoom in. Ooh. This strap that you just attached, just put your finger where the seam is. You want to pin it to the seam of uh, the lining, right like there, so the top edges match. So let's just pin that. Now let's go to the other side. See, if you use safety pins, you just don't, you don't hurt yourself. I like pain-free sewing. Same here. I'm just putting the two pieces of fabric together. I'm going to try to match up the center seams as best as possible. does not have to be perfect. You can just feel it with your fingers. And I'm going to just put a safety pin there to hold that. I lied. I'm going to do a straight pin because I'm going right over to the machine. Get in there. Ow! No, see, I was kidding. So now all we're going to do is... We're going to sew all around the opening. You just try to keep all your edges together. And I always start on one of the straps. Let me take that pin out before I do really hurt myself. So I'm going to put the strap down. I'm going to start on this edge of the strap. I'm going to sew across the strap and you can see my two panels are there. I'm going to just sew all the way around like that. Take out the pin. Sometimes when you get to the finishing, your lining or you know might be a little bit bigger or smaller than the outer part. You usually can just pull on your fabric and even it out. The worst thing that would happen is you'd have a little wrinkle in there. Mine's gonna come out pretty good. And when I say pretty good, I mean perfect. Okay, once again, I'm going to now switch to zigzag, and I am going to, oops, my needle has to be up. I'm going to zigzag along the edge of this, really make it strong. I'm gonna just go all the way around. Okay. 
Now you have a bag that looks like this with some ends sticking out. You're going to take the outside, which is actually your lining. You're just going to pull the bag out of there. And now this part here is your lining that we're going to tuck inside the bag. But what we have to do first is close the bottom. So I'm just going to take those two open ends, I'm going to fold over twice and sew. So let me show you that here. This is pretty thick fabric, but I'm going to do it, where am I, that way anyway. So let's see, I'm just going to fold over once and then twice and it's going to leave a clean edge. Easier for me to do it while I'm here on the sewing machine. This is thick fabric, so I'm not going to start right on that bump on the edge. I'm going to straight stitch. I'm going to start a little lower and then I will back up over that bump. I'm going straight. I'm going to back up a little bit. Very careful over the thick fabric. And then we'll go straight again. Okay, I'm just going to go across. Fold over and over. This would not have to be double stitched, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just the same. Now, tuck that part inside the tote bag. I'll just shake it a little bit. If you see any threads sticking out of the other side, you can just pull those out or trim them. Trim that one. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that the lining is all the way down. Push the corners out. And at this point, you could actually be done. You could stop right now, but I like to reinforce the straps, and I also like to go around the edge up top here just to give it a nice clean finish. So let's reinforce the top. You're just going to hold your fabric together, and we're just going to top stitch all the way around, and it just keeps your uh, edge nice and clean. And I just go about a quarter of an inch away from the top of the bag. Just go right over the strap. Okay, we're coming back to where we started and I'm going to uh, show you something. We are back to where we started, but we're on our strap now. So I am going to stitch down, across, and up on the strap. Maybe I could show you this way. Down, across, and up. So we can reinforce this going to go down. I can feel the strap. It goes all the way to here. I'm going to just go like maybe two inches down. Down. Turn. Go across. Turn. And go up. Now I'm going to do an X. So I'm going to go from this corner to the corner that I just made when I went down. There's a point right there. You'll see it after I'm done. I am just going to turn again. I'm going to follow my line on the bottom and get to the other corner. And then I'm going to make the X going in the other direction. Back stitch a little and go right off. If I would have used a contrasting thread, you would have seen this better. But you can probably see, let me see where the line is so I can show you, very hard to see. But there is an X in here. And this strap is on there for life. I don't know if you can see it better on this side. It's an important step. If you don't even want to do it with an X or whatever, just just do some sewing on here. It can be up and down. It doesn't matter. You just want that strap that is sticking out in there 
you want that to be sewn on secure very very tight let's go to the other side I'm going to start here I'm going to go down and across Up. By doing the crisscross inside, even if you might have missed an edge in there or something, you're going to catch it with the X. So the X is the added special touch. So now I'm going to do my first line of the X, corner to corner. Turn, go across the bottom again. Make my X in the other direction. And we are done. The only thing we don't have is a pocket on the inside, but that's okay. I think for the first tutorial, uh, this is enough. So let's go look at it with me sitting at my computer. It is so incredibly hot and humid. It's humid, more than hot, but... I like this tote. I just think this tote goes good with my shirt. Just because there's black and there's red in the tote, there's red in my shirt. I know it doesn't match, but I like it that way. Just want to tell you a couple things. First of all, I'm so sad there's no pocket in this, but I think it was probably better that we didn't do that step this time, and I will be showing you guys how to do that. So this is what the bag looks like. Do a love. I love this paisley print, and I like the size. This is just a good size for shopping. And then I did want to show you, see when we stitched along the top, see it just finished to that edge, made it nice and neat. And again, let me try to show you the crisscrossing that we did. I didn't want to use contrasting thread because I'm actually going to put this on eBay, and I might I might do a penny auction. I used to do penny auctions often, start something at a penny, but I thought if I'm going to make these things to teach you guys, I might as well put them on eBay after. I really love this tote and it was so easy to make. This is nice fabric, like I said, it's like a soft denim. But just to show you, you can take the inside out if you would want, and let's say it was two different fabrics, if you wanted to use a different fabric, and then you just turn it the other way, shake it in there, and now you can see that, you know, this is the lining side that's out. So if you would have used a different color, it would be, you know, reversible and different. I will show you how to do it with two different fabrics, but when I do that, I also want to show you how to make it that the strap, like on this side, would match this color. And when you turn it, the strap would match that color. So more to come, if you guys want. So I hope you like this tote. Please, if you make one, you must show me. Maybe someday we can make a tote with a zipper. That would be fun. But I don't want to make just totes, but I would love to show you guys how to make more things if you're interested. That is it. I will have this on eBay soon, so please watch for it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye!